All Hello. right. Well, that was quite the intro. Hey, which one are you now, Tor? Are you the one on the left or the one on the right? I'm on the left. I don't know you're... how it looks like on the YouTube, but. So you're Kevin and I'm Lordy then. Oh, was there a name on it? Oh, I'm not Lordy. Not Lordy. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. We've got a little Knife War 101 action happening here. As you know, Knife War 101 is where you come to talk to Chris Lord and Kevin Kent. Uh, and uh, you get Nauto and Mike. Or Instead. not Lordy and not Kevin. Well, today we have some cool stuff, right? No, um, we never have cool stuff. Oh, here we have lots go. of cool stuff. What do we talk? Well, we got some exciting stuff that's coming up. I'm, I'm pretty sure people who watch this already know, but let's say it out loud. Who's coming? Are you holding up your sign? Oh, oh, oh. I didn't. Masashi it is coming. It. it doesn't say on the box. Masashi Yamamoto san is coming to visit us the end of this month to the uh, early August, I guess, the uh, like just about a week or for a week or so. So here's the schedule. The Masashi Yamamoto-san will be visiting. Well, it's going to be the uh, whole Canada tour. So he'll arrive to first to Ottawa, the nation's capital, Ottawa store. We have store in Ottawa on the Glebe area, the 800 Bank Street. He'll be there um, to um, to see customers and engrave some um, knives, I guess. So he'll be there on the July 24th, 24th, okay? He'll be there from a, uh, I believe it's like 1 to 4 or some noon to 4 type of uh, stuff. So um, if you have any of his knives, noon to four if you have any of his stuff um or knives or there we're gonna do some uh launch announcement on uh, his new knife lines as well if you want to actually purchase knife uh at the spot he will be able to engrave like your name or whatever um hey mike you got the uh, some very interesting engraving on your knife right you got a you got a geisha or michael or whatever right yeah you know it turns out my name doesn't translate so well so i ended up with some funny things instead of getting my name i now get uh in good taste or delicious or how how yeah. we say that oishi oishi or yeah something Any, anything you want on the blade he will be able able to engrave a lot of them has to be transcribed into a, a kanji characters that that way it looks good it it um, it's easier, or it actually looks really, really good on the on the knife rather than the uh, uh, alphabets. Anyways, so July twenty fourth, he will be in Ottawa store, noon to four for engraving events. Okay, then he will fly here to Calgary. He'll be in Calgary on twenty six. Again, the same schedule, uh, noon to four. He will be at the store, so you'll be able to see a, a blacksmith um, in person, and he'll be doing the same thing: engraved knives, and you know, talk to and meet, meet and greet. I guess the uh, the blacksmith there, okay? And the uh, twenty, so the store wise, twenty eighth, he will be at our Edmonton location. Doing the same, all the same thing, same schedule, and we'll move to a Vancouver on the 30th. He will be there again, noon to four. It's Saturday, so you know it's it's nice, uh, nice day to come by. Don Penny. Don, I think we could probably work that out. <laughs> I think yep. there's just one word for that. <laughs> We can just get Don Petty engraved. Yeah, but um, yeah, we'll be uh, be there. Um, one more thing that we were really get we got really excited about is the uh, what's happening uh, on the twenty seventh um, between Calgary and Edmonton. 
right, Mike? We have something quite exciting happening. We've got yeah. Masashi, who's coming to visit us. As you've heard, we'll engrave your knives with your name on it. We also are going to make a quick stop. We've met a young man up in Camrose, Alberta recently. By young, I mean he's 16. He comes from a family of welders. Alberta welders are well known for their craft. Uh, they're really good at their job because they often weld things that would go boom if they screwed up. So his grandfather and father are welders, and he took up blacksmithing. And specifically, he took up Japanese knife making. Now, he's never seen a real Japanese knife. He uh, has learned only about uh, Japanese knives from uh, Instagram, social media, and the internet. So you'd, you'd think maybe what would come out of there would be the craziest thing ever. However, he is producing some really beautiful knives that uh, I think are really exceptional for a guy who is 16 years old and self-taught. Mm -hmm. We're going to take Masashi to visit him at his house where he does all of his knife making. Now, we've got some knives on order from this young man. His name is Kenzie. And, and we, we're not going to have them by the time Masashi shows up. But... Nonetheless, Masashi is going to show up and, and I think they're just going to do a little, you know, blacksmith to blacksmith. Like, uh, I've got a really good guy here in my shop and I'm going to talk about the problems I've got and he's going to help me out. Uh, and we're going to video that. Naoto is going to do some translating, of course, uh, but we're really excited for that. Yeah, so something super cool. Um, uh, I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for Kenzie. I'm really excited for Masai San to be able to, and that's that's what uh, Masai San has been talking about. You know, like want to uh, create the connection of the blacksmith all over the world, right? So um, it's it's great to have a um, have him visit the um, you know the blacksmith as youngest as youngest Kenzie, right? Who's uh, who's really get, trying to get into the uh, that kind of knife making as well and you know it's it's great opportunity hopefully for him and the uh, Masai son uh for this uh this visit so we'll have that the uh, event as well uh it's not really it's going to be just him visiting a um blacksmith so it's not going to be like you know public you know event but it's going to be uh fun for sure and we'll write the we'll we'll record we'll make a uh, records of the uh you know what what's been talked about you know pictures blogs um, YouTube videos and stuff like that on uh, days to come. So, something I think that I, 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 one of the reasons I think this is going to be so great is something I've learned about Masashi, especially on our visit most recently in the in the spring here. There is a lot of ways you can go about learning how to make something, and when you come from a place where there's a long line of tradition, and you come from a family like Masashi comes from with an incredibly long line of tradition of of doing the same thing. A lot of the way you learn how to do things is that's just how you were told and you do it that way. And in a lot of ways that works really well. But Masashi-san is not the guy who just does it because he was told to do it that way. He has learned by doing it that way. He then has since gone on to investigate every one of those steps he takes and truly get really deep understanding of why he does each one of those steps the way he does. In some cases, He's changed the way he does those things and continues to produce better and better quality things. Uh, it's and he's you know, he uses science. He uses empirical fact. He uses microscopes and research. And like, it's incredible. The amount of back he puts into his work is, is amazing. So I think for him to help this young guy will be amazing. It won't just be like, oh, just do it this way, because that's the way we do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. it'll be fun. Uh, the, someone's asking, you know, if we are going to Ottawa, uh, I will be with Massage Sun as a uh, for a, yes translator. So I will actually be uh, in at all the uh, all those locations where he he goes. So I'll be now translator. Yes, Mike, no. Yes, unfortunately, but I'll be there. Anyways, that was uh, that was quick quick things to uh, answer. I think. Um, All righty. So, great question. There you go, Naoto. Huh? Why should I buy a Masashi blade over literally anything else? Price versus performance. Steel type is and better. It's nice or just cool, but the 
grand scheme of things, nothing special. Yeah, the um, here's something super special. It's the um, so we are going to launch two new lines of massage sons. There are a lot of things to talk about, especially you know, like massage sun, right? When it comes to massage knives, um, so here. Should we just do that? One. Masashi Kaijin VS1. Uh, VS1 is the, the semi stainless steel. What really, st like, what stands out is really how he forges the blade as well as how he sharpens and heat treatment. Like, Pretty much everything about the knife here. The a um, lot of things goes on. Like um, it's really hard to differentiate. But the, his blaze one, he um, he's the blacksmith, and as well as the uh, sharpener, right? Not many people do the same thing in the uh, in the one workshop. Like, you know, oftentimes blacksmiths are just the blacksmith who forges the blade and sends off to the sharpener. What's that, like, what makes Masasan's blade so special, again, is the uh, he forges while he's actually have the sharpening in mind. So he forges in the minimal, like, he forges the shape that the sharp, it doesn't, I guess, sharpens in a minimum, minimal effort as much as possible. What that means is that the after he sh sh um, forges the blade, it almost looks like a knife with the a little bit of distal taper here and here. That's so why instead of grinding that shape into the knife and wearing it away and having friction happen and the time and the effort it takes to grind it away, he just hammers that in first. Mm -hmm. so that there's less time spent doing the grinding and sharpening process, yes. right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And also because of that, as thin as this knife is, the core exposure for those of you who know a little bit about Japanese knives, the Japanese knives are made with a core steel that's super shiny part right here and a softer steel on the outside. Because he shapes that knife or he shapes the bevel by hammering in, the exposure of the, this core steel is so minimal. Right. Sometimes you see that the core like exposed quite a bit. And what that does is that the core steel is such fragile piece of steel that the when it chips, it chips big. But because how he does this way, it won't do as much as well. He uses this um, some special equip equipment um, kind of I only see them in the uh, Sanjo area but to minimize the low spots on the bevel as much as possible so the resharpening is a breeze okay so those are terms that's really I guess more nerdy right like you know when you use them it's like a little le like you won't notice as much. Right, just like to cut the food with it's just super sharp blades. But in the long run, when it comes to the durability, when it comes to how to like how it sharpens, everything is like really made fantastically. Also, he he uses the a slight different um heat treatment technique. I can't tell you everything because the uh um he uh, he told me that you know like some of the stuffs are secret, but when he does a uh, tempering, oh yeah, no, no, sorry, temp annealing temperature, he does it slightly different on this guy, and the quenching and all that stuff makes this v VS1 stainless well semi stainless steel. Often they are controlled to be about 60, 60 61 Rockwell hardness. He's tested this blade and. It's like 64 Rockwell harness scale, which is like super, super, super hard 
for this type of steel. That means it will keep the edge very, very long time. So in the long run, you will notice much, like, I guess, you appreciate in the long run, like, if you especially are going to take care of your own blades, sharpen your blades, you, you may see that the biggest difference there. It's not like, you know, cut a carrot on the first day and the hole is sharp, right? It's like, it's more, it's a tool to be held for a very long period of time, right? So that's the Kaijin line, the VS1. Did it make, so, make, make, did it, did it make let sense? Me, I just want to answer a little bit more directly about Spoon Monkey's question there. And there's one part he says at the end there is, is it actually like a good knife or is it just cool? Well, I'm going to say something. It's kind of a little like trying to be a little defensive here, but <laughs> we don't think stuff is cool if it doesn't work well. Like that's not our MO. We, we, we're here because of stuff that's good at its job. And we're not here about whether it looks pretty and the guy smokes cigarettes. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of a fun little story about the guy, but we like his stuff because it's very good. And that's the majority of the stuff that we try to bring into this store and sell is stuff yep. that works really well. And, and that's to us, that's, what's cool. That's mm -hmm. the cool part about his stuff. And like Nauto said, he designs it with the end user in mind more so mm -hmm. than a lot of other blacksmiths who design knives to be sharp because they're blacksmiths, but they never actually even cook food, right? Mm -hmm. So he's really integrating the end user into his process. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that makes them better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like he, the other other line, this is even slightly more impressive when it comes to how he forges it. He always um, talks about this traditional especially regionally, like the Sanjo's traditional way of the uh, blacksmithing. The new line, Kokwen, again, it does look like regular Kurochi finish. By the way, making the, the real Kurochi, the black finish on the stainless steel um, like this is actually quite hard. Lots of people do use the um, kind of, uh, I don't want to say dye, but it's, you know, like they, they dye them after oftentimes, but they make it really dark like this is a little bit hard. And kokuen means black smoke, so it's got a really nice black finish, as well as the look at it, the edge. It's got a little like you know smoky finish on them. So this is aesthetic. What's really impressive is that the uh so the traditional blacksmithing in that region he always talks about it's really to shape the it's not really to make a knife shape like a blank he always have to think about in the 3d right how thick the spine is how thick right to here at the bevel is how thin the edge should be right and how it tapers like that right but his um not many actually can and will uh, forge black finish is basically this is how he hammers it, right? So th there's not much uh, sharpening involved. What that means is that this taper here, like from the spine or the, from the hand where it touched the handle, about three millimeter thick, and see how thin that the right the tip is this is not sharpened it is forged in and Can you explain I, the difference between sharpened and forged in what you mean by that so basically he for sharp a lot of people like you can make this taper by sharpening it right on the grinding wheel and make it uh, make it like sharpen them more. You take more steel off from the tip part so that you can make that tip thinner, right? But he used the hammer to make this beautiful distal taper until very thin, almost like probably as thin as Takeda thin, or even slightly thinner, right here. I I need a caliper to actually measure this. Like this is crazy. Um, <laughs> So the uh, what that does is that the you know knife tip should be thinner. Reason 
when you're cutting like the uh, onions and stuff like that, thinner tip will allow the knife tip to glide in much nicer, right? And when you're cutting into, this is the thinnest part of the knife so that when it enters the food, it does have the least um, resistance, right? But it gets a little bit thicker at the, at the heel so that when it enters very smooth, it will push a tiny bit and so that the uh, food like will separate a little bit easy. Does that That's make really sense? Cool. But he does that by uh, forging in. So that means the he doesn't have to. A few things uh, here. The uh, he forges this taper very nicely, uh, so that the um, it it's a functional as well. But sharpening always have this a uh, risk. Sharpening on the big grinding wheel, especially try to make a shape like this, you'd have to grind a lot of. Uh, materials right and material like he always talks about the uh, you know steel how the uh, steel should be i guess um how we should be um sharpened and you have to be really careful not to overheat your steel there's always friction even with the lots of water right like the uh, they use the wheat, big grinding wheel and use lots of water to uh, prevent that from this from heating up so that it start to lose its hardness uh, or the tamper, um, they more you use it, the friction will occur, occur and heat up the steel as well. So he he forges in so that he doesn't have to worry too much about that that risk, I guess. Cool. Uh, so here. <laughs> we, we seem to have a bunch more questions here. Do you want to fire some up there, uh, sure. Scott? Sure. What's the... Uh, you want to just fire up some? Sorry, I wasn't... Well, Spoon Monkey was asked, uh, how should the end user or a resharpener deal with a Masashi? So further to the point of how he designs them to be mm -hmm. friendly to the sharpener. Mm -hmm. So how, how is it friendly to the sharpener? No, how should the end user or a resharpener deal with a Masashi knife? What sort of special instructions would you give the sharpener if you had a Masashi? It's actually not not much. Again, the um, great thing about Masashi san, the again the way he sharpened, there like on the bevel right here. Oftentimes, lots of uh, knife sharpeners leaves quite a bit of bigger cave concave here. Besides, the way he sharpens it, it does this in such a minimal way. So just put that flat bevel flat on that sharpening uh, stone and do that. It's it's really easy to uh, sharpen. Mm -hmm. um, make, make sure your stone is flat and then yeah, put yeah. the bevel flat on the stone. Yeah. And, and that's what he's done is he's built this sort of shape to the blade so that that's all you have to do when you go to, uh, to sharpen mm -hmm. it. There isn't like a hollow to it. There isn't like it's not overly convex or anything, so no. it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, and yeah, user like again, it it's these are not these knives are not designed to cut into like frozen food or anything like that. So right, and users um, just use it for the function, like purpose, I guess. Don't no, don't. No, cut. No. Yeah, there's another neat question here. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about how Masashi's introduced these two new lines as he's trying to skill up his uh, mm -hmm. his apprentices. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, Carmine's asking about like what is Masashi's involvement in making the two new lines mm -hmm. versus the amount of his involvement inside the Kuroshi and Shiroshu. So I guess the question is like, what parts of the job are his apprentices doing that he is not doing? The uh, the I. Kuroshu and Shiroshu, basically he does most like main part that the uh, that involves um, making the knife, right? Forging. Sh Sh Kuroshu and Shiroshu, they are start they start from the same steel, SLD core and the Damascus on the outside, like nickel Damascus on the outside, right? Shiroshu and Kuroshu are actually forged 
slightly different. It's not like Shiroshu is not over sharpened uh, Kuroshu. Let's put it this way. Does that make sense? For those of you who don't know what the Kuroshu and Shiroshu is, like for those who are watching, uh, Kuroshu is the, like, like this, black finish, really nice shiny bevel. Shiroshu is the sharp polish all the way, right? So the, um, for the longest time, we thought the they are forged exactly the same. And that's what the uh, most blacksmiths do. The, you know, if, if it becomes this knife or that knife or different lines, they are usually forged in the like same, same, same way, same shape, same you know. Where the um, he forges um, slightly different for Shiroshu and Kuroshu um, because that the finish look and how that the sharpening process will go is a little bit different. So he forges Kuroshu in a way that makes that. The shinogi line, um, or the this this shinogi line that's right here, that this line between the black and this the polish line, it makes it really really prominent and straight. He forges that into it, and the uh, shiroshu he does it a little bit different, so that the it does very nice even um, like convex uh, bevel to it, like whole blade from the spine to the the edge. Um, anyways, <laughs> so the forging, um, the important part, forging, he does that. Uh, some of the polishing, um, his apprentice were taking part, but the uh, real sharpening and the creating the bevels and stuff are done by a, a massage son. And heat treatment, that was done by a massage son as well. Although the, uh, some of the uh, st uh, places he uses a um, um, lead bath, like the uh, you know, like some of the stainless steel, they have to heat up the uh, forge up to a thousand degrees. And the most traditional um, forge in Japan, they don't, they don't, um, they can't do like thousand. They they don't hold that thousand degree temperature, so they um, they do it in the lead bath. So you know, bath with the lead, and they they control the temperature. But you can't put. A lot of like it's it's controlled, but it's I think that he uses lead bath. I don't think he uses the uh, electric, but very cool. But the uh, so lots of things were done by the uh, massage son. Where when it comes to something like this, heat treatment is the uh, done by apprentice or two workers, right? They've been working there for over like a couple, two three years now three or four years, can't remember, but the uh, they've been working there long enough that uh, they, they take part in that kind of stuff a little bit more. Not so much forging yet, I don't think, but the lots of sharpening, lots of the or other small stuff is done by the uh, those younger, younger. They're not like, they're not 18, right? But uh, those younger blacksmith knife makers. Hmm. Depends on what you like. They're both incredibly good. Uh, I really like the fit and finish on a Masashi knife. I also like the, the weight and the balance of them. But, you know, sometimes a Denka is just an out of this world knife. Mm -hmm. um, if you like that Western style handle with the yep. finger notch, you know, you kind of got to go Denka. But uh, I've got a couple of Masashi knives now. And I think bang for the buck. They're one of the best things you can buy right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's my personal opinion. I, I really like a lot of things that Fujiwara produces. I, I also really like a lot of things Masashi does, but man, bang for the mm -hmm. buck. Okay. Hey, there's a cool question here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to skip over a couple. We'll come back to the one about selling in the, in the feral, but do you think a funayuki, a funayuki mm -hmm. would be uh, a useful knife if you have a guto and a bunka? I don't prep fish often. Now, I think there's we've got to clarify if we're, if we're talking about mm -hmm. a single bevel funayuki. If you mm -hmm. do have a single bevel funayuki and you don't prep fish often, you won't use it very much. 
uh, but when you go to use it to prep fish, it'll be great. Sometimes you get double bevel funayuki, which are pretty much like a santoku at that point. Like a like I'm pretty sure on a on a Takeda box that says funayuki, mm -hmm. not Santoku. And so if you've got a bunka and you're getting a double beveled funayuki, you're pretty much looking at the same knife. Um so uh so there we go. Yeah. But I want to real, real back real quick here. Um, the uh, will Masashi be selling knives? He'll be in the store and he'll be around. You can chat with him uh, through Nauto and in the, in the translation. Mm -hmm. He'll be focused on uh, engraving knives. However, during that time, we will definitely be selling knives. Uh, he's a very well trained blacksmith. I have no idea if he's good at selling knives or not. <laughs> uh, but we'll certainly have him there and if you had questions for him you can definitely answer questions but we'll we'll definitely uh do our best to have a lot of his inventory as much as we can available in the store for you to buy when you're there which is really oh. cool because you can buy a knife and then he can engrave it for you which is also super cool so these knives when are we when these knives will be available for starting on july 15th this Friday, those will go um, on, go live online, and so as all the stores. So you can purchase uh, beforehand, like on the online or the stores, or you can just. We should have enough inventory, <laughs> but the uh, if you want to make sure that the you want to go to see uh, Musasan in person and have these knives engraved. You may want to kind of go to store as soon as that becomes available, like say this weekend, right? And see, you know, all the selections. Coquen, this black SLD finish, will all all of them comes with this uh, Kiritsuke tip or the this little is that called black, uh, drop point? No, flip point or drop point? Not sure. That's a but different this, kind of knife altogether. This Kiritsuke tip right here, so it's got a Sujihiki with this super cool Kiritsuke tip, or the Petty with this tip as well. Okay. And uh, this Kaijin, very traditional Nashiji finish. It's really polished. Name actually Kaijin. This particular kanji means a ash. So it's like really it looks like it ashes to me. Right? So that's the, all that, really cool looking. That will become available on the fifteenth uh, of July. It's four days from now. Hey, are and, all the ones that have the uh, blonde collar that you've got there? Are they all going to have blonde collars, or is it going to be the kind where, you know, the horn itself material can change between blonde mm -hmm. and dark, and sometimes one side is, one side isn't. So are they yeah. going to be varied, or is he going to try and focus on just the blonde? They they vary. They we try to like they try to do it all like blonde or white ish, but the um they vary. Like there are some oh, like natural. Yeah, but it's not like we try not to have with the uh black black, right? So there will be like a little bit more like um blondish, whitish, um, more I've seen some like a little bit more brownish color as well. Okay. Well, let's talk about, you know, Nato and I, we were just there. We just, mm -hmm. I mean, a few months back now, but we were really fortunate to get to go to Japan. We visited all sorts of blacksmiths, some some new ones that we had made friends with in the last couple of years. And, uh, and of course, we got to go and see Masashi. And I don't know, mm -hmm. what was your, I had a great time. We, we were hanging out with him for a couple of days, a couple of nights. He took us out to some amazing places. We hung out at his workshop. We did an Instagram Live. What was yeah. your favorite thing when we were there, Nato? With Masashi, well, the um, well, every time we're there, it's like it's always fun, right? The uh, he, when it comes to like knives, like it, the moment that we were we were at the his uh, office, and he brought a this cured ham, and brought two knives that he made, and slicing the those hams, and we're tasting it. It was it was like really really fun. Uh, for a moment, he was like, "Let let's see. This is the same piece of ham, kind of cut with different 
and one is sharpened diff- like those two knives are sharpened slightly differently and see if we can tell if that makes the difference on the flavor that of that uh, thing and it was just mind blowing as well right the um that that the way that he described and it all made sense and also he took those knives out that's been cut in the middle because you can't really test the edge like hardness of the uh, like steel right here at the spine right because the this is all soft part rockwell hardness test hardness testing is a pressing test right so if it presses on at the surface it doesn't really it, it, it doesn't really tell you the true result so he you know took out this uh, knife that's been cut here right and it's been tested by the uh, those companies who is specialized and they they tell you okay this part of the knife this is how hard this is and all that stuff right that one knife, one knife was cut in three or four different places right and that was like super super cool stuff what the what was uh what was your favorite time when you were there mike uh it's hard to pick i i really like that that thing where we're we're eating ham i loved a couple things so we're eating cured ham and he brings out a bottle of pinot noir both of them were made in niigata both the pinot noir and the cured ham it was kurobuda ham so black the kurobuda the black pig cured like prosciutto it was brilliant it was so good and then he brings out a bottle of Pinot Noir, which is obviously the, you know, the famed Burgundy region of wine. And it was exceptional. It was an exceptionally good wine. Like it was so good. Uh, I don't know. He, he's got such good taste. Um, and, and watching him work is always a pleasure. But um, I think I would agree. It was that sort of that section where we got to see mm. how much uh, he gets into the science of what he does. Mm. And, and really he displayed that he has a very intense knowledge of the science of, of, of materials and steel and heat treating, like at, a, at the molecular level. Uh, and I think that's really where he's able to take that information and adapt his techniques to deliver better quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was, that was great. Sure. Well, and we, we went to see the, um, well, we went to eat this, um, this chicken famous in that area it was really cool too right it's basically yeah, half, awesome. yeah like chicken cut in half put in the batter or flour deep fried whole thing and put a little bit of curry powder at the end it's- it was so good it was a little funny to get you know when you go get fried chicken it's often in pieces that are somewhat manageable and mm. what they determined to be a manageable piece was half of a chicken but they were nice. They wrapped the little drum stick with uh, yeah. with tin foil, so you could hold yeah. it. So you had like chopsticks and the leg, yeah. and then you ate half a chicken, yeah. and it was absolutely delicious. That's good. Yes, that's good. Anyways, that was yeah, that was that was, that was fun part, I guess. The um, but the the way we the way he talks about the uh, knife making, and um, I'm we're so we're pretty excited about kind of delivering his knowledge to um to our customers right because um and you know he'll be able to come and see the blacksmith um so yeah all right all right do do we want to kind of people were talking about you know single bevels and stuff so you know like masashi does make say like you know B Din is talking about Masai San needs to make sing- more single bevel knives. I I agree that his uh, his single bevels are fantastic as well. He you know he forge welds and bevels uh, and he, he's the way he makes the uh, single bevel. I always are impressed by how he does things, especially. I have one. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's the, amazing. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> it's it's crazy how I like when he when he visited last time last couple times that he visited us the um he um we did a little forging demonstration right and lots of people when the, when it comes to the forging demonstrations they try to you know forge into the knife shape that's super cool what he did though um, he even did the forge welding 
demonstration with the uh like the forge that he don't he doesn't use them all the time like we always you know ask local blacksmiths for help right so he was using those like things that he's not used to like he doesn't but he he used that and he was showing the how he forge welds right and also he was making like small deba but oftentimes the when when you forge them it looks like um deba but he f- sh- hammers the bevel into it too right so that the way the blank piece that he made looks exactly like a deba and it, it's not it was like just incredible to see what is that massage knife to start with get a 210 kuroshu and 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 it doesn't even have to start it could likely end right there yeah 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 i i have 210 kuroshu it's it's incredible uh incredible knife one one downside one downside i don't want to like i great great knife but if you are working in the kitchen if you're a prep cook and bring masashi kuroshu to work and they have to cut pounds of pounds of say onion that knife is not for that the reason because the finish is kind of rough it starts to hurt your knuckle oh it's like you start to sand down your knuckles oh interesting i have to you know that's something that i have to you know mention because you know i've got a i've got the vs1 santoku Mm-hmm. from the older series the koi series mm-hmm. i love it it's incredible and i think a lot his knives are for really fine work mm-hmm. uh, especially that vs1 i find uh sometimes i find i want something that's just a little bit beefier and heavier if i'm doing beefier heavier jobs like i don't know it depends i think sometimes the occasion be careful when you're using a masashi i think is the point i'm trying to make is you need to be in the you have to be like focused on what you're doing because they are in the high high performance end which means that they're they're definitely a little bit more in the delicate end as well so if you hammer it into a cutting board too hard and you twist it when you get down into the cutting board you, you might ding the edge a little bit so yeah but the kaijin is really great uh, great knife to begin with for sure okay so Regarding both knives, are the knives shown on the website the full range, or did you pick the ones you prefer from each line? I think we're getting all of the shapes that he's making in this line. Yeah. So it's the. Uh, so yes. if it's not there, he's not making it. Yeah. Is that yeah, right? The, uh, yeah. The basic, yeah, basic shapes, and that's yeah. Alrighty for the. Two new oh, lines. Good question. Yes. What's the cladding steel? The four. I have to double check. Um, it actually Where? stated on uh, a few few of the things. I have to double check. Um, that is. As you might guess, it's not something that we really pay a ton of attention to because it doesn't mm-hmm. really translate into a lot of the performance. Might have been four twenty. Uh, stainless steel but 420 may be too hard so I'll, I'll double check I, I remember it was written somewhere so and the, but they are the stainless steels yeah they are stainless steel both yeah 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 no I think now I remember looking at something it said 420 as well I thought so but I have to double check because 420 is a little bit of softer um knife steel so um it could be it could be wrong but you know Alrighty, yeah. All right, what else we got here? Has Masashi-san explained why he chose the shape of his gyuto with the tip that is more curved up? Yes. So, yes, he he has explained. So. It is not the actually the how carved up he uh, his knife. Well, let's put it this way: his knives 
are purposely designed to not this part, but to have more flatter edge on from the heel. So his knives has or the Guto has longer flatter part than the other knife makers. Therefore, the carve from the tip to here becomes a little bit more like car looks like more carved up. Does that make sense? Right? Because he wants to have the tip right here and he wants to have a little bit longer flat part. So in order to connect these two spots, it gets a little bit more uh, rounded, right? One of the reason he explained why he makes the shape like this is that when you're a sharpener and the, you probably know a few things, making the knife super, super flat is much more difficult than making a nice carve, right? So he starts the knife off with the lot more flatter part and when it comes for the sharpener, when it comes for the users to use it, he, you, you can kind of, you know, make your own carve, sharpen your own carve into it. So it's like customizable in a way. But, but though, he's actually started to uh, change the slight different shape though. It's not actually as flat as before, right? If you remember the... Um, if you remember that, um, what's that? The hammer pattern, the um, not a camera, the other one. Um, what's the name? Koi. That's such a good one. Koi. Koi, yeah, yeah. If you remember Koi, it had a lot more flatter part, right? Mm -hmm. It's starting to have slightly different shape to it, like this too. So that Coco end, man. Yeah. I don't know. I think I, I think I'd get a Coco and Guto, like a two forty. Yeah, Coco and the slight difference um, in a function uh, between Coco and uh, Kaijin. Because the uh, the Kaijin he because that the this finish here, in order for this finish to kind of pop. He left the. Uh, he had to leave the spine slightly thicker than Coquin. So if you're looking for the red, like super super thin blade, go for Coquin. If you're looking for slightly more slightly more robust, go for Kaijin. That's my my answer. That's a great answer. Yeah. Okay, we got a new question up here from Mike H. Yeah. Are these two new not lines direct replacements for the Koi and the Kamuri, Kamuri, or are they better due to their improvements? So it is are they just the same knife that looks different, mm -hmm. or are they actually different at heart? It is slightly different when it comes to the um, the say the improvement on the um, heat treatment. That's definitely the one of the one of the things the uh, that happened on these knives, the again, as I said, the VS1 steel, um, oftentimes they they are hardened to about 60, 61 uh, hardness. His uh, his improved method of heat treatment managed to get to the really really hard 64. It's almost equivalent for a uh, white carbon number one. It's like really really hard steel. Um, so definitely that has the quite a bit of improvement there for sure um i personally like handles <laughs> handles are really important the um to me um the kemuri you no know, the koi handles are slightly bigger for my hand um but these like really nice tochi octagon handles comes really really fits in my hand very nicely so there, definitely there is a uh, performance improvement um, as well as the, you know, some similarities as well, right? They, so how it cuts like um, this Coquin series uh, out of box sharpness should be very similar to the, um, 
to the uh, Kimuri line that we had. Except though, it made made it a little bit easier to sharpen as having that the primary bevel like this, right? So, because you can just sharpen flat on the bevel and sharpen them. What do you think, Mike? Good. I think it's great. Yeah, no Honosuke yet. No, yeah. We look forward to one though, but I think he's going to perfect what he's got first, and then mm -hmm. add the sort of the the out, mm -hmm. outer yeah. side of shapes. But his man, the shape of his uh, Honosukis is awesome. So I would be super excited to see one. Yeah. All right, All right, top to bottom, workhorse to laser. If you go through uh, Kaijin, Kokuen, Shiroshu, Kuroshu. Okay, which one is the? Sorry, go ahead. Shiroshu is a workhorse. It is probably has the most durable um, beveling and the blade. Then probably Kuroshu or the Kaijin. Then Kokuen is the. Uh, when it comes to the uh, like brittleness or the laser, so it's like workhorse, uh, Shiroshu, Kurosh Kaijin, and Kokuen, laser, Kokuen, uh, maybe Kuroshu and uh, Kaijin, then, uh, then uh, Shiroshu. That's, yeah. That sounds up. right, yeah. The Kaijin is a beautiful knife and so thin and so laser beam like. And that way he does that Nishiji finish with a bit of almost like a mirror polish to it, it is so smooth. That way, that really like almost faint texture on the face of the blade, personally, I think does the best job at, at re releasing that suction factor mm -hmm. or that that uh, resistance that a knife can get from having a smooth surface. It just, it floats through stuff. It's beautiful. Yeah. And look at how, how like straight, what I mean, like the reflection, just looking at the reflection on that edge it's here. So even. It's so even. There's no like distortion on the thing there. It's so difficult to do. There's none. There's none. It's crazy. It's crazy. Which I'm going to be honest is going to be really difficult to, uh, to resharpen someone's knife and make it look that perfect on the uh, mirror polish. We'll do our like, best. We'll do our best. The flatness though, like that's, that's what it's impressive. Like see the line that you, you see in the reflection, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, doesn't change at all. <laughs> right. What happens is if the mirror is there's like tiny bit of a low spots or something, the image will distort, right? It's like, ah. Yeah, it's it's like nearing perfection. I know. Only the one line is made with VS1 and the other with three or, yes. You are correct, YZ yes. Bow, YZ Boss, YZ Bows, Mr. Bose. All three are SLD except for the uh, Kaijin, which mm. is the BS one. So yes. just let me just uh, touch base on all the things that we're talking about here today. We've got these new lines, the Kokuin and the Kaijin. You're going to see them July 15th. That's going to be in stores and, and online. Also, we have our friend Masashi that we've been talking about coming to visit us. He will be in Ottawa July 24th, Calgary July 26th, uh, July 28th he'll be in Edmonton, and July 30th he'll be in Vancouver. And that's what I mean is he'll be in our stores in those cities. On the 27th, we're stopping by Camrose, Alberta to stop and see this young Alberta blacksmith who's going to get a visit from a master. It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned for some videos from there. Uh, mm -hmm. If you'd like to get knives engraved, you can come into the store with a knife and we'll get your name on it. If you do want to mail your knife to us and have us have him engrave it, please contact us, hello at knifeware.com. We have a limited number that we can accomplish. We will have to do a bit of a back and forth with you to establish the kanji that he would engrave based mm -hmm. off of your name. So Nauta would probably do the translation and get it back to you and you would have to say, yeah, that looks great. 
Although I have no idea what it says. Sounds good. Uh, we promise. I'll, I'll, I'll explain very nicely what each character means <laughs> and yeah. try to make sense of it all. So, yes. Uh, now, this applies. You don't have to come and purchase a knife to get him to engrave it. If you have previously purchased a Masashi knife, you've got one that you've been using for five or six years. That You can bring that down to the store as well. Mm -hmm. there, there will likely be a lineup, and it will be on a first-come, first-served basis. So try and get there as soon as you can. Yeah. And uh, if we don't get to it, I, I apologize in advance, but there's only so much a man can do at one, one time. Yeah. So. Yes. And yes, I do believe we could accommodate you by if you bought that knife and wanted it engraved before we shipped it to you, we would be able to do that for you. Thanks, DJ. We live to serve. Yes. All right. Oh. Mr. Oh. Fujimoto, do you have any any finishing comments here? I'm just going to do really quick, uh, like, you know, some super quick uh, answers, uh, answering to super quick ones, you know, one on one. How do we like shun? Shun knives are great. The uh, it's a, they're really well made machine forged blade. Very thin, a little bit more fragile for the point, but they're they're pretty good. To it. I mean, like in comparison to what we've been talking about, it's, you know, quite a bit different. But they're they're good knives. Another thing here, why no half body? The, he doesn't use those high speed powder steels because they don't respond to the forging. He's a blacksmith. He likes to forge and he likes to make a change by forging it and hammering it. And if that, the, they don't, they're really good steel, but they, the blacksmith won't be able to change how hard that is and stuff. It's, there's not much, I guess, the uh, flexibility in the steel. It's not so fun for him. It doesn't it, bring him the, joy, so he doesn't choose to use it. Yeah, well, either either blacksmith makes it or the machine makes it. It doesn't make that much of a difference, so he doesn't he doesn't like it. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. that was good. The quick quick. Now, so you'll be doing the translation for in store engraving in store, correct? Yes, I'll be doing the in store engraving. Yeah, translation. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be good. All right, I think we snuck we we snuck in the last few questions there, so that's mm -hmm. awesome. Awesome. So. Any That's more questions? Good. Hello at knifeware.com is always a great place to reach out mm -hmm. to us. We've got, uh, we have operators are standing by and they'll take yep. your call and they'll get it to the right person like me or Nauto or whoever. So hello at knifeware.com is a great way to get a, in touch with us. And we look forward to seeing you in the shops. We hope we get to see you yes. there. And if you can't, uh, yeah, we hope we get some uh, good videos for you folks. Thanks for watching.